thank you. Uh, thanks, Brad and Abigail, for the introductory remarks. Uh, I typically never use notes, but given the uh, time constraints, I, uh, I'll spare you my long-winded uh, expositions. Uh, so the title of our project is Genomics for Precision Drug Therapy in a Community Pharmacy. And uh, the first question that uh, may come to mind, and certainly comes to mind to the 220 students uh, that I teach uh, this year in uh, pharmacogenomics for third-year pharmacy students, is why pharmacy? And um, specifically, why, how does genomics fit into the pharmacy? I think once, uh, uh, once my 10 minutes are up, I hope you'll appreciate that why not pharmacy? And, and more to the point, pharmacy is the place where you should be um, doing personalized medicine. We've been talking as a, as a group, uh, as genomicists, as geneticists, as academics, as, uh, as uh, individuals in the uh, um, pharmaceutical se sector, we've been talking about personalized medicine for decades. And as I tell my students in Pharmacy 330, 2015 is when uh, we're going to walk the walk in uh, personalized medicine and bringing genomics uh, to healthcare and well care. Um, and so part of the reason uh, that pharmacy makes the most sense is that the pharmacist is right now the, the node, is the central point in, um, in a patient's healthcare network. And um, the pharmacist is, the, um, is that point of contact, is that human interaction that allows for, um, for a um, reflective um, interaction, allows for a non-hurried interaction where the, the potential impact of genomics and your genome can be um, conveyed to the patient in a non-threatening, uh, low-risk uh, situation. And we all know that point-of-care testing is where uh, the future of pharmacies are, lie, and um, along those same lines, um, pharmacies are the place where um, information can be shared with the patient, again, in a non-threatening, illuminating um, manner. And so the idea here is that uh, rather than uh, being competing for limited times uh, or limited time in the ER or uh, uh, GP's office, a pharmacy and the pharmacist uh, who will be uh, uh, appropriately trained offers uh, the perfect environment for which to convey the potential of what um, uh, genomics and pharmacogenomics uh, can deliver. Uh, it's really, uh, I like to think about it, um, we, everyone keeps trying to think of a better word for personalized medicine, and no, no one really has to this point, uh, but one working, one uh, thing I'm, I'm, I'm playing with is the idea of person-to-person -person medicine, and, and I think that's what the the pharmacy and the pharmacist um, embodies. Um, so, uh, to get to the logistics, and uh, uh, as Gabe mentioned, it, it took us a little while to hammer this out. Um, and, um, and that's a good thing because um, a, lot, um, a lot of what we were doing in the nine months or so uh, from uh, when we initially had this idea to now was um, both managing expectations and um, and figuring out how we we're going to do uh, what we had hoped to do, and and even more so, figuring out what we both hoped to do together. Um, so this is uh, okay. So this is obviously not a new idea, um, but defining the different parts. Uh, as, as a systems biologist, uh, which is what I, uh, the role I assume in my other uh, life, as a systems biologist, whenever you're faced with a difficult problem or a large problem, uh, the first thing you want to do 
is uh, define uh, the parts. Come up with a good parts list so you know how they all fit together. Um, so what you're looking at here is, are the logistics of phase one of, of the RUPP proposal. And the reason I'm, I'm emphasizing phase one is that, as uh, Gabe mentioned, um, these projects are meant to grow incrementally. Um, and as soon as we had the plans for phase one outlined, we, have, we started um, <coughs> imagining and envisioning what phase two would require so that um, the, uh, the uh, logistics and the data would be extensible to a larger project. So in the pharmacy side of things, we've worked out uh, standard operating procedures for consent, sample, uh, uh, saliva collection, for DNA extraction, for data collection, the protocols for, um, for uh, um, secure de-identification, and then the samples are brought to the UBC sequencing center, uh, where they're processed, sequenced, and analyzed. Phase one is a one-way pro process. Phase two, um, again, the, uh, the activities will occur in the UBC sequencing center. We don't actually, we can't uh, imagine what this will look like a year from now, given the rate of change uh, in sequencing technologies. But we'll be doing our sequencing um, uh, at UBC or a uh, standalone uh, organization. Uh, the samples will be re-identified and delivered back to uh, the practitioner and patient. And the next slide really sums up the, uh, the heart of the UPP. And that is all about <clears throat> taking two very distinct organizations, in this case, the University of British Columbia, our uh, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, and the BC Pharmacy Association, the user in this UPP. And taking these two culturally uh, uh, distinct <laughs> entities with, with different priorities and aligning them. And if you look, I won't go through everything on this slide, but this is what, to me, what the UPP program is all about, is aligning these priorities. So we always want more data. We, are, we usually have a research plan. We're interested in discovery and uh, we need to follow the rules. The BC Pharmacy Association needs to make sure that they're immunized against information they don't want, make sure their messages are structured and consistent across all their pharmacies. They have an eye towards commercialization, and that's important because if this is going to work, it has to be commercialized, and they have to follow appropriate laws. And thankfully, uh, I learned in a, much more than I ever expected to. Um, and what I learned is that there's an awful lot of overlap where the, our priorities can be aligned with our user partner. And some of those uh, priorities are listed here. We now have in place a data sharing agreement, a project charter, We've, uh, some of you in this room may have already been uh, contacted uh, for a stakeholder engagement uh, interview, and we have a consent form where pharmacists can deliver uh, and consent patients. And so where are we? Uh, our ethics have been approved. Our standard operating protocols are extraordinarily robust. We've engaged the first 20 pharmacies in this pilot. We have our legal agreements in place. And now we're moving on uh, actively in the last minute uh, to pharmacist education and training, which is where I'm really uh, um, enjoying uh, the experience, not to say, uh, where I'm really enjoying the experience. We're recruiting patients starting this month. Phase one analysis will be uh, four weeks after the first patient is enrolled. And as I mentioned, we're preparing for phase two. And so uh, I'd like to thank you all, well, first for the opportunity to speak uh, this morning, and also for the opportunity to take uh, part in the user partner program. So thank you.